So there were just a couple of things I wanted to touch on in terms of like uh, congenital heart stuff. Um, I don't know, maybe it'll help to like kind of break it down and understand some of these congenital heart defects a little bit easier. Um, <clears throat> basically you can break down the heart, you know, when it's forming into three segments, the atria, the ventricles, and the great arteries there is Miriam. So I was just gonna go over just a, a couple of things like for this um, congenital heart defect stuff uh, to try and break it down, maybe understand it a little bit easier. Um, so, um, the heart can be broken down in basically into three segments. So you have your atria, your ventricles, and your uh, great arteries. Um, and then you can have to determine either uh, sidedness or cardiac position. So there are three cardiac positions. Uh, so cardiac position refers to uh, position where the apex is pointing. So it refers to uh, position where the apex so that's your cardiac uh, position. So there are three cardiac positions. Uh, the first is levocardia. So levocardia, that's going to be our normal position. Apex towards left. Uh, second position is going to be dextrocardia. This is apex. is now pointed towards the right. And uh, the last position is going to be mesocardia. So that's an uh, apex that's pointing straight down. So something to remember, cardiac position is independent of tinnitus. So cardiac position only refers to uh, the axis of the heart. Which uh, direction is the apex pointing? So we talked a little bit before about um, the different situses. You know, our situs solidus, which is the normal position, liver on the right, spleen on the left, IVC on the right, aorta on the left. Situs inversus, where we'd have uh, you know a mirror image of that, where the liver's on the left and the spleen's now on the right, and your great vessels are also switched so IBC would be on the left and aorta is now on the right and then situs ambiguosis where it's kind of everything sits midline look like you know you have two livers or no spleen
So cardiac hiatus. So that sightedness, those are the, you know, um, situs, all of this, situs, versus, versus. That's our cardiac sidedness is it's determined by the location of morphological Right atrium. And how do we determine what's the morphological right atrium? Uh, I do see empties. So to determine situs, we look at IVC, we look at the aorta, and we look at the hepatics. Hey, Dan. Um, I don't have anybody to watch my baby this morning. That's why I keep getting up because I'm like watching him. Oh, this okay. Point. Yeah, I just wanted you to know. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm focused on here. <laughs> um, so AV valves, uh, another thing to remember too, is AV valves are always concordant with the associated ventricle. Those are It's associated ventricle or 
what that means is MV mitral valve is always attached to LV. And the valve is always attached. So if we have discordance, <clears throat> and B is attached. RV, the mitral valve is attached to the right ventricle, mitral cuspid to, sorry, left ventricle. Um, so we know in terms of the great arteries, the aorta normally arises from the anatomic left ventricle, pulmonary artery normally arises from the anatomic right ventricle. Um, <clears throat> So now I just want to get into pick up where I left off was that <clears throat> transposition. Arteries. This can be also called your TGA. So there are um, <clears throat> so at the end of the third week, there's a common trunk that is divided uh, into the pulmonary artery and the aorta. Um, this is done by spiral growth. If there's disruption of any of these mechanisms, uh, transposition can occur. <clears throat> there's a different, uh, there are different varieties of transposition. Um, the two most common are dextro TGA. Two most common. Uh, 
extra UGA. Also abbreviated DTGA. Levo or Levo. L. So with the DTGI. Extra loop occurs during development, causing grade arteries to be transposed. Extra loop occurs during development. Causing great arteries be transposed. So the aorta originates from the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery will originate from the left ventricle. Originates from E and pulmonary artery originates DTGA. Um, this creates uh, two independent parallel circuits of blood flow. So with DTGA blood flow, on the right side we have blood flow entering right atrium. Goes into the right ventricle. Into aorta. Body. Back. The right atrium. Meanwhile, pulmonary venous return is as follows. So we have um, left atria, ventricle, goes into the pulmonary artery, PA, lungs. to the LA again. Okay. 
So you can see that life is dependent on some mixing between these two circuits. So this often occurs uh, through the PFO and PDA and sometimes ventricular septal defects. Must have mixing circulatory circuits. PDA, PFO, or PDSDs. So these two circuits have to have some sort of mixing in order to sustain life. You know, you can't just continually have, you know, blood flow, not uh, oxygenated blood, not reaching the organs of the body. And uh, the pulmonary blood flow, you know, not going to the body to drop off that oxygen. So depending on, uh, in order to sustain life, you know, there has to be mixing of the circulatory circuits through the pain and ductus arteriosus, through PFO, and or through VSDs. Um, depending on the degree of intermixing of blood, patient will show either minimal cyanosis or intense blue coloring. Degree of mixing. Well, Severity symptoms. So the uh, second type of uh, main type of transposition of the great arteries is going to be our levo TGA or LTGA. Levo TGA L TGA. So this is also referred to as a uh, corrected TGA. So this is a corrected transposition of the great arteries is a ventricular uh, is a ventricular inversion with aorta originating from the RV and pulmonary artery originating from the left ventricle. So also referred to as an L transposition, the anatomic right ventricle will be dis will be displaced posterior and leftward, becoming the H um, becoming the arterial ventricle. And the anatomic left ventricle do be displaced anterior and rightward becoming the venous ventricle. So corrected. Position.
but we still have transposition of the arteries. So, uh, you know, aorta is still attached to the RV and uh, pulmonary artery is still attached to the LV. But now we just have um, displacement of the ventricles. So, the anatomic RV. Posterior left part arterial. Ventricle. An anatomic left ventricle will be displaced anterior and rightward, becoming venous ventricle. LV displaced. Interior right. I mean, Venus. So the, the circulation pathway for LTGI. Circulation pathway. So PV, pulmonary veins, pulmonary veins go into which now we have uh, transposition of those ventricles. So the LA is now connected to your RV. So you're now your anatomic RV. Goes out of your RV into your aorta. to the body. Body goes to all right. All right. Your anatomic LV which is connected to the pulmonary artery. Okay. 
still belongs. No belongs. We're able to get back to the LA. So pulmonary veins back to the LA. So we're able to complete the circle all the way back. So despite displacement of the great arteries, uh, the pulmonary arteries arise from the venous, the pulmonary artery arises from the venous ventricle and the aorta arises from the arterial ventricle. If there are no other uh, defects present, the patient will have a normally functioning heart. That's why they call it corrected TGA. Any questions about that? So uh, DTGA, dextro TGA, is discordance of the great vessels with the ventricles. Um, so you have two independent circulatory systems that require mixing of the blood in order for the patient to thrive and sustain life. So you get that mixing of the blood through a patent PFO, through a patent ductus arteriosus, or potentially ventricular septal defects. Um, LTGA or uh, Levo TGA, that's uh, also called congenitally corrected TGA or corrected TGA. Uh, with that, you have um, discordance of the great vessels still, but the heart is congenitally corrected itself. So the morphologic uh, left ventricle becomes now the anatomical right ventricle, and the morphological uh, right ventricle becomes the anatomical left ventricle. So you're able to have essentially a normal functioning heart if there's no uh, presence of other uh, congenital defects. Another condition we could have is uh, truncus arteriosus. This. On artery arteriosus US. <laughs> uh, so, this is a condition in which the coronary arteries, main pulmonary artery, and aortic arch all arise from a common trunk. Condition. which Mary Others Florida Pulmonary Artery Um, common
I'm sorry, I'll put over here. So which the coronary arteries aortic, we'll put aortic arch. And pulmonary artery all arise from a common trunk. And that common trunk is the aorta. Another condition could be a double outlet right ventricle. is present. Another condition that we could potentially have would be uh, supravalvular. Aortic. 
Extenosis. So as the name implies, this is uh, an obstruction caused by a narrowing of the aorta above the aortic valve. It's caused by narrowing of the aorta above level valve. You can also have supervalvular pulmonic stenosis. Again, same thing. Caused by narrowing pulmonary artery. These are just, I'm continuing with diseases of uh, the great vessels. Um, you can also have um, peripheral pulmonary artery stenosis. Stenosis. So this is an obstruction due to an abnormal narrowing of the distal pulmonary arteries. Caused by narrowing of distal PA pulmonary artery. And also have some conditions that affect the aortic arch. So something called a right aortic. In this condition, uh, aorta is located to the right of the trachea. Interrupted aortic arch. So that is a lot of communication.
between the aortic arch and the descending thoracic aorta. Descending thoracic aorta. Uh, we also have another condition called valvular rings. Oh, I'm sorry, vascular rings. Vascular rings. And aortic arch. So uh, <clears throat> vascular rings and double aortic arch. So is a ring formed around the trachea. Esophagus due to the abnormal persistence of the aortic arches. One of the last anomalies that could potentially affect uh, the great vessels would be a uh, total anomalous pulmonary venous return. So we've been talking a little bit about a partial anomalous pulmonary venous return. So we can now also have total anomalous So the total anomalous pulmonary venous return all four pulmonary veins. Attach. Right atrium. We have a common venous chamber.
or to a systemic vein. So what that means is all four pulmonary veins could potentially come together into a common vein that connects into the right atria. Um, so then we have uh, persistent normal fetal uh, communications. So those are going to be our PFO and our PDA. So PDA. This is a failure of the ductus arteriosus to close as it normally should after shortly after birth. Uh, may be persistent due to a variety of reasons, including prematurity, uh, maternal rubella, or even a high altitude birth. So premature or premature birth. PDA originates from either main pulmonary artery level of 
bifurcation. Or off left pulmonary artery after bifurcation. typically directed posteriorly and slightly to the left towards the anterior lateral wall of the aorta. So directed posteriorly and slightly To the left, towards anterolateral wall of aorta. PDA, uh, diastolic reversal of flow in the, <clears throat> there's diastolic flow reversal in the descending aorta with the PDA. So, central diastolic flow reversal. So if the baby or child is a uh, full term, they'll do surgical ligation. Division or <clears throat> catheter coil occlusion. Full term, uh, they're premature. Something called endomethacine will close the duct. Endo, I-N-D-O. T 
H A C I N in the Omega scene. Close that. And then conversely, prostaglandins keep ductus open. Prostaglandins duct open. Remember, there are some ductal dependent lesions that could uh, potentially exist. You know, if we think, you know, back to our transposition um, or tetralogy of Fallot, uh, severe with severe pulmonic stenosis. So they'll give these babies prostaglandins to keep that duct open until they're able to do surgery to repair the other congenital heart defects. Prostaglandins. Yay. Open. Cases. Oh. Duckful. Dependent. Lesions. Some of those would be our CFO, Tetralogy of Fallot, with severe pulmonary stenosis. Um, aortic atresia. Hypoplastic heart syndrome. Our LTGA. All right, uh, let's see, some valvular anomalies.
right. So, um, so uh, our main one is going to be our bicuspid aortic valve, so along the valvular anomalies. A cuspid aortic valve causes valvular aortic stenosis. So so the aortic valve is consists of two cuffs and a raffi. Valve consists of two cuffs and And have some tricuspid anomalies. So again, these are more common. So one potential anomaly could be tricuspid atresia. Cuspid atresia. There is a dense band of tissue between RV and RA where the tricuspid valve should be with no opening. Dense band of tissue between RA and RV where Cuspid valve should be this. There is no opening. So 
or tricuspid atresia, there must be uh, coexisting shunts. So it must coexist with either an ASD or a PFO. Must coexist with ASD or PFO. If you can imagine now, a lot of bl the blood is being shunted away from uh, from the lungs. These babies are cyanotic, so cyanosis. In addition to that, uh, right atrium and left heart overloads lead to enlargement. Atresia, RA, and left heart enlargement. We need to volume overload. You know, typically see a small RV. That's been a valve atresia associated with ASD. It's also associated with BSDs, pulmonic stenosis, pulmonary atresia. TGA transposition of the great arteries. Uh, so not as severe as tricuspid atresia, we can have tricuspid stenosis or hypoplasia. So TB stenosis. Or hypoplasia. Hypoplasia. With this annulus is present, but small. Um, this seen in apical.
were some costal. Wrong. And tricuspid uh, stenosis or hypoplasia is associated with Epstein's anomaly. Critical pulmonic stenosis. Uh, pulmonary atresia. Uh, we can also have a condition. We have an imperforate tricuspid valve. Think of it like they're sewed shut. Right. So So this can, can be surgically repaired. And of course, we have Epstein's anomaly. So we know that the cluster valve is. abnormally low. Um, severity depends on RV function.
uh, with Epstein's anomaly. The thespian valve is typically absent. Thespian valve is absent. Well, it's usually present. There's typically dilatation of the tricuspid annulus. Without dilatation of the TV annulus, it's going to wind up with a, a custard regurgitation or TR. That seems a lot anomaly. Um, the septal leaflet is uh, tethered to the intraventricular septum. Leaflet. Epstein's anomaly, it's associated with the yeah, oh. pulmonary. Atresia, PBA, prolapse, MPP. Our congenitally, our congenitally corrected TGA, so our L TGA. So patients with Epstein's anomaly, they typically present with cyanosis, uh, dyspnea on exertion, weakness. on exertion.
they run a higher risk of endocarditis or endocarditis. So degree of displacement determines RB function. Function is less than thirty five percent. Less than thirty five percent of anatomic. B. Prognosis is poor. Epstein's anomaly, the main things we're going to be assessing for are going to be our tricuspid regurg and uh, pulmonary hypertension. So we're going to assess for CR and pulmonary hypertension. Good morning. So again, if we go back to some of our previous lectures, we mentioned vascular disease on the right side of the heart is typically congenital. Uh, so with uh, the pulmonic valve, uh, we can have valvular pulmonic stenosis. So this is typically due to you know an abnormal fusion of the pulmonic valves. Is typically to, to abnormal fusion. Uh, an obstruction of blood flow from the right ventricle to the main pulmonary artery during systole uh, will create a pressure gradient. So we measure those pressure gradients 
you know, using our pressure half time equation. And then we get a couple of numbers. Um, so, uh, EG, our pressure gradient. Less than 50 millimeters mercury. It's mild economic stenosis. You have a pressure gradient that's greater than 75 millimeters of mercury. That would be considered severe. Harmonic stenosis. Dan, I have a question. When I was reading the notebook seven or whatever, it says mild is less than 36 and severe is greater than 64. So I just don't know like what numbers I should go off of. Like, I don't care which numbers I use, but I just want to know what to know. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah. You know what? Let me see. Because I know, like, they they can be yeah, different. I might, you know? No, I might have older values here for my notes. <laughs> well, I'm not seeing that either. <laughs> no, no, no. You probably. <laughs> let me get. Okay. Search. Let's search. You know, let me highlight that, and I will get back to you. Okay. Cool. So pulmonary stenosis is typically due to an abnormal fusion of the cusp. So that would be considered valvular stenosis. Uh, we could also potentially have pulmonic stenosis subvalvular. So also subvalvular <clears throat> so sub subvalvular can also be called infundibular infundibular This is basically a right RVOT outflow track obstruction. So RVOT is obstructed. Uh, so pulmonic stenosis can also be classified as supervalvular in the main pulmonary artery just above the level of the valve. So supravalvular is in main pulmonary artery, MPA, just above. Level of valve. So, in mild cases, uh, survival into adulthood is common with unrepaired pulmonic stenosis. 
Um, so pulmonic stenosis is a pressure overload. What's the heart's response or the ventricle ventricle's response to a pressure overload? Anyone? This is how we're going to have to start thinking about like all these questions. Is it a pressure overload or is it a volume overload? So stenosis would be a pressure overload. Hypertrophy. Hypertrophy, yes. So heart's first response is going to be hypertrophy followed by dilatation. So RV will hypertrophy. So remember, these are typically kids that we're scanning. So we haven't typically gotten to the part where the heart dilating yet. So we're going to see right ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, the right ventricular valve flow track. Uh, so over time, uh, the valve can become more thickened and fibrotic and calcified. Stenosis, RV will hypertrophy, valve, and um, thicken then fibrotic. Fibrotic. Horsing of stenosis. All right, uh, mitral anomalies. Congenital mitral valve stenosis. It's rare. So we can have a uh, Displastic valve with thickening globular leaflets. Displastic valve with thickened globular. have abnormal visceral development. Yeah. 
fuse their shortened cordae. potentially have abnormal papillaries muscles. So what do we see on ultrasound? Uh, so we typically see a small LV. And effects are similar to adult mitral stenosis, but without calcifications and hockey stick and other complications. Uh, similar. Similar effects. To adult mitral stenosis, but without calcifications. or other complications. So mitral stenosis, again, now we have a pressure overload. So the atria's response to a pressure overload, atria don't hypertrophy, they dilate. So the main response now for this heart, we're gonna see a dilated left atrium. We see small LV and dilated. Way. We know once the left atria starts to dilate, we wind up with back up to the pulmonary vascular bed, and everything kind of spills over into the right side of the heart once it gets to the lungs. We wind up with pulmonary congestion, then pulmonary hypertension, and then it can potentially affect the right side of the heart. So we can have also MV hypoplasia. So we just have small annulus. So it acts like a stenotic valve.
Again, we're going to see a small L ring. Also associated L E O T construction. Survival depends on LV size. We can also potentially have a uh, mitral valve atresia. This leaflets. It's just a thin membrane between LA and LV. Membrane between LA and LV. This could be seen and hypoplastic left heart syndrome. You can also have parachute mitral valve. So the cordae of uh, both leaflets converge onto a single pap prominent papillary muscle. Four day. Four day. Well, both leaflets. Converge onto a single prominent. Valerian muscle. Usually a posterior 
video. PM, PM. Both well, leaflets converge into a single prominent, uh, now they converge onto a single papillary muscle, usually posterior medial, or into a group that's fused, or a group fused papillary muscle in the left ventricle. Um, so, L, L, sorry, microvalve opens in a funnel or a dome shape, and V opens. Funnel. Dome shape. With turbulent. Well, this all. And increased velocities through NV. This we also again wind up with a dilated left atrium, like we would with mitral stenosis. Uh, we can have a supervalvular mitral ring. So this is a ring of connective tissue superior to the mitral valve annulus. Ring.
superior mitral valve ring is associated with other mitral valve anomalies. Anomalies. LV T obstruction. Uh, left atrial rotation. Pulmonary hypertension. Uh, this superior mitral valve ring can look like core triatrium. So look core triatrium. is different. Uh, does not doesn't divide to two chambers. So core triatrium then, core triatrium. triatrium. <clears throat> this is where and it looks one RA and two left atria. So there is a thin uh, perforate membrane which divides the left atrium into two segments. It's a perforate. Then membrane, which divides LA into two segments. Um, 
The proximal accessory chamber receives blood from the pulmonary veins. Accessory. Chamber. Seize. Blood. Pulmonary veins. Uh, distal chamber is uh, the true chamber with left atria, with um, left atrial appendage. <laughs> and communicates with mitral valve. Distal chamber. Is true chamber. With left. And, and communicates with mitral valve. With mitral valve. Sorry, then um, true chamber with left. What what else? Atrial uh, left atrial appendage. So the distal chamber is the true chamber and communicates with uh, the left atrial appendage and communicates with mitral valve. So it contains okay. left atrial appendage. So if we kind of Kind of think of it as a thin membrane that's perforated, so there's holes in it that allow the blood flow to go through. Thinking of your pulmonary veins coming in. So this would be your proximal chamber, and then the distal chamber, which is really your true chamber. Contains the left atrial appendage and connection to the mitral valve. This would be your proximal chamber with the thin membrane across that's perforated, allowing blood flow to pass through. And then you have your distal chamber. So prognosis depends on the amount of communication between the two chambers. So how open are those perforations? How many perforations are there? How much blood flow is actually able to get between those two chambers? So it depends on the size and the number of uh, something called fenestrations. That's a, there's a fancy way of saying openings you know, in the membrane. Prognosis depends, depends amount of communication between chambers. Distal chamber, proximal chamber. So essentially, how much blood is able to, you know, cross over that membrane?
So if that was the core triatrium, I could draw that uh, super valvular mitral ring. I mean, that could potentially look like uh, That would tend to be a, you know, look like something like that. So it's a ring of connective tissue superior to the mitral valve and inferior to the left atria. So it can look like the core triatrium, but the location is different and it doesn't, you know, divide that chamber into uh into doesn't divide the left atria into two distinct chambers uh so still under mitral I feel like it's a lot of things for something that's uh, not common. <laughs> um, you can potentially have cleft mitral valve, but mitral valve, and it's uh, usually anterior. Mitral valve leaflet. Mitral valve. Seen. Parasternal short axis. And associated. With mitral regurg, mitral regurg, I'm on. Uh, you could also potentially have our MVP, that's our mitral valve prolapse. Collapse. So this we see seen in our external long axis M mode. We do our M mode tracing of our mitral valve and our parasol long axis, we're able to detect. Mitral valve prolapse, and then can cause MR. Going to talk a little bit now about hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Uh, 
plastic. So left ventricle is reduced in size. The mitral valve atresia. Also be caused by uh, hypoplasia of the aorta. So, yeah. Aorta. Diagnosis is made. LP measures less than ten millimeters. The aortic annular size is reduced. Distorted or absent. 